All right guys, we are back in my garage for another video and today we are going to be talking about max cooling mode again. I try not to do these follow-up videos too often because I know making too many videos on the exact same thing isn't really what you wanna see, but I saw a lot of comments from people saying things like max cooling mode makes your water pump fail faster and that's why people's water pumps are failing. Or on my video where I shared that I was tuning the X7 and I was having those heating issues, People saw the checkbox for the sport cooling for intercooler and they were like, I thought you said you don't run max cooling mode. Why are you turning it on? So I wanna really clarify the details on those two things to specify one, max cooling mode won't just make your water pump fail in the way that you're thinking. And two, yes, I do run sport cooling for the intercooler for a very good reason. So let's go ahead and talk about it and hopefully you guys find this video useful again. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So I'm gonna to try to condense my explanation of max cooling mode just to make sure we're all on the same page. Again, our cars are of course water cooled, the engine has coolant flowing through it, but we also have an air to water intercooler. So because of that, we have two completely separate cooling systems that operate independent of each other. So we have the high temp circuit, and that's what controls cooling for your engine, your heater core, your turbo, a lot of like the main components in your engine that run at over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. But you also have a separate low temp circuit. And the reason why you need that is because you wouldn't want your IATs to be at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. You wouldn't want your AC condenser to run at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So they have a separate low temp circuit built into your engine bay that is coolant just for these systems. So separate from the engine and the transmission cooling, you have intercooler and AC condenser cooling. Now with that, we've got three different water pumps. You've got an electric water pump for your low temp circuit. So that's the one that basically manages coolant flow through your intercooler and the AC condenser but you also have a mechanical water pump for your high temp circuit. So this was a big switch from the past. We had an electric primary water pump. Now on the B58 engines, we have a mechanical primary water pump that just runs off of the serpentine belt. Now the downside here is in the past, your electric water pump could run after the engine was turned off. So it could cool off your turbo and any auxiliary systems. So with our case, BMW just gave us both. So we still have the primary mechanical pump, but we have a secondary electric pump that just runs to cool off the turbo after you turn off the car. So it kind of functions like a traditional turbo timer. Now with two cooling circuits and three water pumps, of course, the next step is four different cooling modes. And again, this is made more complicated by BMW because they have replaced a traditional thermostat with a heat management module. So in the past, you either had your thermostat open or closed depending on your engine temperature. With the heat management module, it's basically controlled by the DME and directs coolant depending on how you're driving your car, what your coolant temps are, and basically depending on the demand. So there are four different settings for your heat management module. The first one is the cold start phase and basically everything is sealed off and closed. So all of the coolant stays inside of the engine and it can warm up as quickly as possible. Then you have the warm up phase and this just directs coolant to the heater core so that you can heat up the cabin as quickly as possible. This is primarily for comfort reasons because in winter, the last thing you wanna do is wait for your car to get up to 160 degrees or whatever before your heater starts blowing warm air. So as soon as it gets to a point where it can comfortably start warming up the car, it'll switch to this warm up phase so that the engine can still continue warming up quickly, but you can have some heat inside of your car. Then after that, you have the normal operation, and this is where all of the systems are open, but it's not always at 100%. It's basically switching between, you know, maybe 10 to 100%, depending on the engine demand and what's needed to actually keep the engine at operating temperature. So there is a target set in the DME, and if you go above that target, it increases the flow to different cooling circuits, and if it's below that, then it decreases the flow to the circuits to try to keep it in that operating range. 
But again, this is the heat management module that's changing. So it's only directing flow to all of your radiators, depending on what you need for your cooling system. Then you have the max effort setup, and this is where everything is open except what you don't need. So it closes off 90% of the flow to your heater core. It closes off the bypass valve that was keeping all of your coolant inside of the engine just to make sure there's no lost efficiency going through extra hoses. And it directs all of that coolant 100% through all of the radiators. So this is when you're going full throttle or when you're, you know, basically in the highest demand scenarios when things are getting really hot and the car goes into that kind of emergency mode to maximize its cooling. So with that in mind, you can see how max cooling mode works, hopefully. But if it's not clicking yet, max cooling mode works with the heat management module. So it basically lowers that coolant temp so that the heat management module opens up quicker and keeps temps lower consistently. And in my experience, I've tried this myself. I showed you guys at my last track day, I tried it to see if it helped reduce temperatures and just driving around, my temperatures wouldn't get over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And there's a very good reason for that. Let's go ahead and read exactly what our tuning companies say is how they implement max cooling mode. So if you look at boot mode's explanation, they say that max cooling mode will reduce your water coolant targets by 10 degrees Celsius. So that explains why when I was driving around, temperatures wouldn't go over 200 degrees because that 10 degrees Celsius drop translates to almost 20 degrees Fahrenheit of reduced temperatures. So it was probably hovering around 190 or 195. It also says that for the B series engines, this enables the intercooler pump to be active at all times to reduce intake air temperatures. And this is something, unfortunately, we can't monitor easily from the cluster, but if you monitor your gauges while you're driving around, you'll notice that when you come to a stop, IATs begin to rise. And that's because even though coolant can be flowing through the circuit, you don't actually have any airflow over your heat exchanger. So this is just basically going to keep your intercooler pump running so that you get as much coolant flowing through to shut off that heat. And especially when you're driving around, it makes sure that you maximize the cooling going through your intercooler circuit. Now, MHD is very similar, except they have completely separated control for these two options. So for coolant mode, it gives you a flash option to change the oil and coolant temperature targets to give improved cooling during spirited driving and for use in hot climates. Then separately, they have the checkbox for sport cooling for the intercooler. And the way that this works is the option runs the pump for the water to air intercooler cars more in order to improve cooling for IATs. Again, this is especially useful when you're just sitting. So this is the option that I have selected on my 440i, my 340i, and my X7 to maximize the efficiency of the intercooler. Now the MHD option is a little bit different since it doesn't just turn on or off. You can set the cooling mode to either normal, sport, or track. And so that incrementally lowers the coolant target, but otherwise achieves the same strategy that boot mode is following. So again, let's answer the two main questions because people are seeing water pumps fail and they're wondering if that's caused by max cooling mode. And the water pumps that you're seeing fail, similar to what I ran into on my 440i, cannot be affected by max cooling mode. We are specifically talking about the mechanical pumps. The mechanical pumps can leak, they can fail. I've experienced that myself, but it has nothing to do with max cooling mode because max cooling mode can't change how the water pump works. It's a mechanical pump. It runs with the engine. It can't spin any faster. It can't spin any more often. It spins with the engine. Just like a 1000 horsepower car isn't spinning the engine faster than a stock car. If it's at 3000 RPM, it's spinning at 3000 RPM. The same thing goes for the water pump. It is spinning based on the engine speed. So the longer you run the engine, yeah, the water pump will run longer. The higher you rev the engine, yeah, the water pump will rev higher, but none of that is impacted by max cooling mode. The electric pump for the high temp circuit isn't affected by max cooling mode because it only runs after the engine is turned off. So the max cooling mode feature that we're talking about here that reduces your engine temperatures is not going to make the electric water pump run faster or more often because it only runs if you've been driving the car hard. Again, that's regardless of whether max cooling mode is turned on or off. So I just think that there is a misunderstanding there because there are so many water pumps that people are saying the water pump is going to run faster or more often and it's going to cause it to wear out. When in reality, the max cooling mode that's dedicated to your engine cooling circuit has nothing to do with changing the speed of a water pump. 
It has everything to do with optimizing how the heat management module is opening up those ports to maximize cooling and maximize coolant flow to all of your radiators. Now, yes, there is a third electric pump for the intercooler circuit. And yes, I do use the sport cooling mode for intercooler, which is also a part of the feature for boot mode. But in my experience, those don't really fail. I have not seen those failing very often. I've probably seen two people have to replace theirs. And usually it's because of a short circuit code. So there's some kind of wiring issue. Maybe they spilled something on it. On our cars, it's kind of in a weird location. It's like right underneath the headlight. So if you spill coolant on it or oil on it or something like that, then potentially that could cause it to fail. But even in any other case, it's something that could fail over time. It's not something that I see as failing more often because you put sport cooling mode on, especially now in the middle of summer when temperatures are 90 plus degrees Fahrenheit. I think if anything, it is a safety thing because if you're going to accelerate hard and build boost in your car, it's very easy for IATs to get over 110 or 120 degrees. And when I was on track, I even saw temps at over 130 degrees. So this is really something that I think optimizes your system even better if you run water and water wetter in the winter and kind of swap out your coolant to get better cooling. I think that'll give you a bigger benefit and also upgrading your heat exchanger similar to like my CSF heat exchanger that will give you a nice cooling benefit just to make the system a little more consistent. But I haven't seen anything that directly says turning on sport cooling mode for the intercooler or turning on max cooling mode in BM3 will make the intercooler circuit electric water pump fail more often. If you guys have seen that, feel free to comment below and let me know what you found, if it's on Facebook or Bimmer Post or whatever the groups are, but that's just not something I see. Typically people complain about the main mechanical water pump leaking for various reasons. So hopefully this answers any questions you might have. I'm sure there are probably other ones as well, and I'll try to make a future video if there's something else I need to address but hopefully this kind of clearly explains that mechanical water pumps aren't failing because of max cooling mode. And yes, Kevin runs sport cooling mode for the intercooler only because it helps reduce IATs, especially in summer. And I have not seen that have a big effect on the electric water pump for the low temp circuit. And yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. So thank you guys for watching this video and I hope this helps. And if you do have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.